there, good looking. Stick around for this kettlebell strength workout, focusing on the lower body and the abs. Now listen, if you don't own a kettlebell, a single dumbbell will work just as well. Now I have two kettlebells for this workout, so if you have that option, I highly recommend a heavier and a lighter one. For reference, I'm using an 8 kg and a 12 kg. And you want to stick around to the very end of this workout because I have a Tabata burner, baby, that your body is going to love. Yes? Awesome. Lace up your runners. Let's go get warmed up. Hello there and welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and hey, for over two decades now, I've been helping women over the age of 40 get fit and fierce, baby. So if that's you, click that subscribe button. I would absolutely love to keep working with you. All right, we need to get ourselves warmed up and then we're gonna start the strength workout. Starting with the shoulder warm up, big arm circles going behind the body, please. Knees are soft, feet apart, abs engaged. I hope you're having a fantastic day. You will walk out of this dripping with sweat, big smile on your face, muscles burning. You're gonna love it. Last three, two, one, and now open close. Beautiful. So as I mentioned, you definitely can use a dumbbell for this. Kettlebells are a lot of fun though. They kind of sit against the arm a little better for some of the movements, but a dumbbell will work just as well. Last three, two, and one. All right, add some lunges for me with the arms coming up, back knee coming down as low as it feels comfortable for you. We are doing lunges in this workout. There are no modifications showing, so heads up. If you can't lunge, uh, maybe try one of my no lunge workouts. <laughs> okay, but uh, we are going to be doing lunges and squats and really working into the lower body with the kettlebell. The kettlebell providing some instability because some of the moves will be holding it with just one arm, creating more recruitment in the obliques and your waist muscles. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Last four, three, two, one more, one. All right, we need to learn a hip hinge for our kettlebell two hand swings. I want you to place your hand hip bone and bottom rib. See that? On each side, perfect. Now we wanna keep that space consistent. I'll face you first. Feet apart, push your hips back and hinge forward, not letting your fingers come together. Let's try that, okay? Here we go, bum back. Good, now squeeze the bump. Now we're gonna go a little faster, pretending that we are actually doing that kettlebell swing. I want you to be prepared and knowing what a hip hinge is before we add weight with this. Deal? Deal, good. Four more, here's four. Three, two, one, excellent. Come to the front of your mat for me. Step back with the right foot, right hand on the ground. Open up, reach up, look up, feet together. Other arm, other leg, here we go. Front knee and ankle lined up. Getting into a very deep lunge here while we also add some twist and thoracic rotation in the upper back. So we have two different exercises for each circuit or each grouping of movements. One will be lower body dominant, the other one will be ab dominant. Three rounds, 30 seconds are on the clock. And then like I said in the intro, we're finishing off with a bang. So you wanna stick around to the end of the workout. All right, one more each side. Last one. Beautiful, now grab the heavier kettlebell if you have the option. Hold on to the base of it for me and just circle around the head, really rooting yourself in the lower body, warming up in the shoulders and the core. These are called halos, you're staying close to the head. One more, beautiful, let's go the other way. You're going right behind the head if you're able to. I'll go to my back so you can see. Bottom of the kettlebells pointed to my ground. Last two. One more and release. All right, if you need a sip of water, go for it now. We're starting out with a squat pattern and then moving into a plank. The squat, simply hold the kettlebell up, goblet style. 
Feet are wide, toes are turned out, and we're taking it deep and squeezing the booty and coming back up. Okay, you ready? Let's get set up. We're going in three, two, one, go. Now, kettlebell's gonna stay close to the body. Knees are tracking with the toes, pushing that bum rearward. Hopefully you do have a heavy enough kettlebell because again, this is a strength workout. So we're looking to fatigue the muscles. Your heart rate's gonna go up though for sure because we're turning legs. Now in 10 seconds, high plank and place your kettlebell in front of you. One more, release. All right, place your kettlebell a little distance away or ideally arm length away. Get yourself into a high plank on the knees if you need to modify. And now we're tapping the kettlebell, hands coming back under the shoulders. When we tap, what we wanna make sure is that the hips are not shifting. So feet apart for me and really root yourself in that lower body position. So core dominant and definitely working shoulders as well. Again, you've got those two options, right? On the knees or high plank here. So those are our two moves. Two more rounds after this and then we move on. Breathe. Again, you're placing that wrist right under the shoulder, time. All right, grab your kettlebell by bending your legs and not your back. All right, get it up there. Remember our setup, feet wide, toes turned out. Kettlebell held close to the body, chest up. Ready, set, go. Knees tracking with the toes, yes, good job. So I took the team, the team and if you're new to the channel, are my two dogs out for a walk this morning and we got eaten alive by mosquitoes. I think I had a thousand carcasses on my body of mosquitoes when I got home. Holy cow, they're bad this season. One more rep. Time. My shepherd did not like them. <laughs> he was very irritated. <laughs> Bella, my rescue dog, she couldn't care less. All right, high plank. Again, we want to be an arm's length away. I want you to reach for that kettlebell. Reach it. Don't make it easy for yourself. Again, on the knees if you need to modify. Both positions though. We're placing the wrist back underneath the shoulder. We're keeping the hips quiet. Couple more reps and then we're into our final set. Time. All right, here we go. Bend the knees to get that kettlebell. All right, toes turned out, feet wide. Yeah, perfect. All right, chest lifted. Now push your bum rearward, knees track with toes, squeeze the booty. Slow and controlled, dropping down low. One more rep, time. Okay, final plank. Knees or toes, remember your option. And you can also get rid of the kettlebell taps if you're not into that, don't worry about it. Just keep the plank though. <laughs> that I don't want you to get rid of. <laughs> now feet apart if you're here in a high plank with me, okay? Again, that's gonna help keep those hips quiet, which is one of the goals of this exercise. We're moving into some lunges coming up in about 10 seconds. And if you can have the heavier, if you've got the choice, a heavier kettlebell, we'll use for the next series as well. Time. All right. Kettlebell resting on the outside of that left forearm. From this position, you can place the hand behind the ear on the other side. We're taking it back to a lunge, okay? Left leg back, ready, go. 
So you're keeping the upper body really still and it's hard to do that because this kettlebell is heavy and it's pulling you to your left side. This is the beauty of kettlebell training is we're working a lot of core muscles without you even knowing it. So right now this is almost an anti-rotational drill while we also work into the legs. Time, woo baby. All right now, remember that swing, that hip hinge we learned? Let's do it. So you start with the kettlebell down and you can add a bit of a swing pattern to get it going and then we hip hinge, use the hips to get the kettlebell, lock it up there, shoulder height only. Good. So it's a hip hinge, knee bends. Now when the timer goes, kettlebell's resting on the left forearm and the left leg's going back for a lunge, okay? Perfect. In three, two, one, release. All right, so it's resting on the outside of the left. And then maybe have it off to the side if you're like me, you gotta watch. <laughs> okay. Or right, pardon me, not the, not the right, the right arm. We're doing the other side. Here we go, get it together, PJ. Step it back. Now, if you're able to, I want you to work on that lunge pattern, bringing that back knee all the way to the ground. Perfect. Front knee lines up with that ankle. It's gonna shoot past the laces a little bit. Upper body is upright. When we're in that final lunge position, that right shoulder and hip are in one line. So we've got one more round of each. Let's do kettlebell swing. When we do the final round, we'll alternate our lunges, okay? All right, so it's a hip hinge. And you're using momentum on this. Let that happen. Ready? Swing it through a little bit. And up. Up. Two hand swing. Hip hinge. Beautiful. Time. Woo. All right. We're going to hold the kettlebell upside down now. Hold it close to the chest and alternate our lunges right and left. Okay? You ready? Sit. Let's go. Step it back. Knee to the ground if you can. Feet hip width. Good. Time, okay. Final two hand swing with, okay, with that hip hinge. So feet apart, we want them wide, ideally a little wider than shoulders. Now swing it through a little bit, get a little momentum going and then up. We're moving on after this. Keeping the heavy kettlebell if you have a choice of sizes. I know you're probably thinking, PJ, why did you ask me to bring the lighter one? When are we using that? We are, don't worry. <laughs> Time, beautiful. All right, now let's keep this wide stance. Now we learned the hip hinge, which is uber important because we're gonna do it again with our deadlift. So bum goes back. We bend the knees if we're able to, kettlebell bottom hits the ground. Gaze is slightly up, so we're not letting the head drop. We've got back and neck all the way down to tailbone in one line. Kettlebell starts in between the feet. Good, stays close to the body. Excellent. Not sure if you can hear my dog, Bella. She likes to bark at everybody that walks by on the sidewalk. Last rep. 
time. All right. Now, you can have hands on the ground or join me with hands on your kettlebell. Have the handle facing away from you. Grab onto the ke kettlebell. So you're keeping that kettlebell even. This is going to be hard, okay? Now, feet apart. Step forward with the left. Step forward with the right. So it's a wide mountain climber. Meanwhile, we're perched on top of our kettlebell. So if you don't like this, you can place your hands on the ground or maybe even build your ground up. Place your hands on a chair or if you've got a couch nearby or a table. But it's slow and controlled. We've got a lot going on here. Stability of the shoulders, core, strength, and hip mobility. So it's a good one. Time. Bend the knees to pick it up. Yeah, okay. Here we go, feet apart. It's a hip hinge, that's super important, gang. Now let's pull the shoulders back and down. All right, get that muscle contraction in the mid back, push the booty rearward, slight bend of the knees. We don't have a stiff leg deadlift. We want to bend the knees. Couple of reasons. Safer for the back because Here's reason two, a majority of us have really tight hamstrings. So when we have tight hamstrings and we hinge forward, something's gotta give, and it's usually that lower lumbar area, and we don't want that one, that area to round. So I like a bent knee on our deadlifts. Time. All right, back to your mountain climbers. With or without the kettlebell, up to you. If you're with the kettlebell, the kettlebell handle's facing away from you. All right, hands on top. Feet wide, let's get that high plank. Ready, set, and step out. Good. Keep the hips down, breathe, time. All right, Whew. All right, so final round, okay? Get the feet wide, kettlebells in between the feet, hip hinge for me, grab onto it, drive up, squeeze the booty, do it again. Now, if your heart rate's like, you can probably hear me breathing. My heart rate's elevated, right? These are very slow and controlled moves, but they're taxing. So that's good news. You don't have to go fast like a banshee. <laughs> you can go slow and controlled, hit the form, not hurt the joints, dime, and still get the aerobic benefits. <laughs> All right, last mountain climber. Here we go. Feet apart, all right, yes, beautiful. We step forward, left foot, go. 30 seconds here, we'll grab some water and then we'll start using that lighter kettlebell I asked you to grab. If you don't have one, no worries. As I mentioned, anytime you can get rid of the kettlebell. Do body weight only. Nicely done, all right. Grab a sip of water. Whew. Very sweaty in the hands. We're experiencing record high temperatures where I live, which is the west coast of Vancouver. We're not supposed to be experiencing record highs. We're supposed to be just, you know, temperate, average. Average, that's what I love about Vancouver. Everything's average. Average temperature, no. Not this summer. Okay, so here is our Tabata, starting with the legs. Grab the lighter kettlebell or lighter dumbbell. Okay, we start into a lunge, and it's gonna challenge the balance a little bit. Let me quickly show you. I'm holding on to the kettlebell with the left leg, left arm, pardon me, left leg goes back. All right, we come down into a lunge, and as we come up, we lift that back leg. Down into a lunge, we come up, we lift that front leg. So we're rocking back and forth. I have no idea what to call this, so I made the name up this morning, Monster Walks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> it worked for me. <laughs> so 20 seconds, and then we do the other leg, eight rounds. Yeah, I know, this one's gonna, this one's gonna burn. Okay, so let's start all on the same page, okay? Kettlebell, left hand, right hand. Oh my goodness, I can't get my left and right. I'm gonna blame it all on the mosquito bites. Right hand with the kettlebell, right foot behind. Good job, PJ. Way to know your left and rights. At 51, I'm still learning. <laughs> okay, so let's start with the uh, lunge. So lunge, and now lift your back leg up, slight pause, lunge, lift the front leg up. And we just rock it back and forth. So our lunge pattern won't be as deep as it was during the workout. As I said too, you can get rid of the kettlebell or dumbbell anytime. Time, okay. Left side, left leg back. So whatever hand the kettlebell or dumbbell is in, that leg's behind. All right, start with the lunge. Now lift the front leg, lunge. This is not my balance side. <laughs> I can totally tell. Woo. Wow. Time, all right, here we go. So we start with the lunge pattern. Ready, set, go, lunge. Back leg up, lunge, front leg up. Now where should you be feeling this? Usually, for most of us, in that front leg. Time, other side. If you feel the back leg more than the front, don't worry about it, you're not doing it wrong. Just means that's where you feel it. Okay, we're switching sides. Ready? Whew. Lunge, then left back leg. Now front leg. Kettlebell stays fairly still. thinking about how high I can lift my legs either time because we do want to keep constant tension and if we bring that leg too high we hang there too much so give it a try here just a little lower if you're going pretty high lunge up lunge step good step Time, whew, okay. Other hand, I just have it resting on my hip. You do whatever you feel is gonna help you with your balance. Let's go, lunge, up, lunge, front leg. Lunge, back leg, lunge, front leg. Time, one more of each. And then we're gonna move into an ab Tabata. Get yourself set up, ready, set, and give me the lunge. Back leg up, lunge, front leg up. A lot of balance on this as well. I'm feeling a lot of the muscles in my front foot fired up, so that's cool. Time. We're also not going too deep with our lunge, so there's not a lot going on with the knees, which is kind of nice. All right, final, final one, ready, set, go, lunge. Time, all right, final drill. We have two different ab movements. It's still a Tabata, starting with a reverse curl. With the reverse curl, get the kettlebell, and I'm keeping the lighter one. Extend your arms straight up above you. Now, keep the kettlebell still, so there's some shoulder action here, while we reverse curl up. Now, if this reverse curl is impossible for you, start with feet on the ground for me and roll the knees to the chest. All right? Yes? All right, good. So get your arms straight up, legs up, or knees bent. Ready, set, 
go. Breathe out. Now when the tailbone lifts off the mat, I want you to think about imprinting your feet on your ceiling above you. So you're pressing your feet straight up. Beautiful. Now don't move the arms or the kettlebell. Keep it above your chest. Handles pointed towards the head. Time. Now have a seat for me, nice and tall on the spine. Keep the vertebrae stacked, lean back, and add a twist. Beautiful. You'll feel hips on this as well, in addition to working the obliques. Keep the kettlebell close, and don't allow that lower back to round. These are our two moves that we'll cycle through for the eight rounds. Time, all right, reverse curl. Kettlebell up, arms are straight. Okay, and kettlebells above the chest, ready, go. Plant the feet, press them up towards the ceiling. Press, breathe out. Time, seated. Remember, your first step on this twist is stacking the vertebrae, getting that neutral spine. Then lean back, kettlebell close. Good. Now if it's too much of the kettlebell, what do you do? Get rid of the damn thing. <laughs> Use body weight. Breathe. Time, halfway, here we go. Legs up if you can, arms up. Otherwise, feet are on the ground and you're rolling the knees towards your forearms. Ready, here we go. Plant the feet up towards the ceiling. Exhale, good, exhale. Use that breath to help you out. Arms are straight, you got it. Kettlebell is still, you got it. Abs are burning. You got it. <laughs> All right, time. Come on up. Twist it. Ready? Nice and tall on the spine. Lean back. Feel those abs grab and twist it. Time. Legs up. One more of each and then we stretch. Arms are fairly straight. In fact, I would go as far as to say the elbows are locked out. Go, exhale. Time, twist it. Here we go. Nice and tall on the spine. Good job, you. Lean back, final 20 seconds. Water and stretch coming up, go. Time, woo, well done. All right, you, grab some water. I think we deserve it. All right, let's stretch, okay? Get into our hip flexor stretch for me. Right knee underneath the hip, left ankle and knee, and I've got my left and rights correct this time. <laughs> Give me a little lunge forward, but more importantly, what you're doing is tucking the tailbone under and contracting the right glute. Now, right arm straight up and then lean away from that right hip. Stretching into the hip flexor, which worked on our lunges, our squats, those monster steps, even the mountain climbers. So I hope you enjoyed the workout, whether you're using a kettlebell or a dumbbell. Bring the arm down, let's straighten this front leg, leading with the chest, so it's a hip hinge, come forward. Feel that stretch now into the hamstring. So once again, the kettlebell, just, uh, 
a little bit more unstable tool to work with, which creates more core recruitment. In particular, when we're holding it with one arm, the opposite side of the body and our obliques, our transverse, has to fire up so that we don't rotate and twist towards that kettlebell. So there was a lot of anti-rotational movements in this workout, which is really good for your core. So you might not have even felt you were really training your core that hard until our last Tabata, but you were. So that's where the beauty lies. Let's release to the other side with the kettlebell. Ankle and knee lines up. Now squeeze the left glute, inhale the left arm straight up and lean away. Now in over 50 fitness, our kettlebell instructor there, Tamara, she has competition size kettlebells. So that means no matter what size they are, what weight they are, they're the same size. So that makes for learning how to move with the kettlebell a lot easier. You can gradually add more weight, but not have to um, try to accommodate a larger size dumbbell like mine. You'll see that, I'm not sure if you can, but the 8 kg is smaller in size than the 12 kg. So if you're thinking of investing in some kettlebells, I recommend the competition style. Just as I said, it gets you used to one size of kettlebell so that when you build, you're not having to readjust to the size. You're just readjusting to the weight. <laughs> All right, straighten that front leg, hip hinge for me. And bring yourself into a plank position and then push your hips up for downward dog. Your feet are apart, ideally hip width. Feet are in a straight line. Gaze is in between the feet. Ears are beside the biceps. Pressing the backs of the knees away from you. Pressing the hips up to the ceiling. Lengthening the back of the body. Couple more breaths. And release, have a seat on your mat. Right foot in front for me. Grab onto the right knee and then just lean forward. You're gonna get a stretch here into your side body. So I'm actually grabbing onto that um, right knee of mine with the left hand slightly, and then I'm twisting, bringing the chest down to the thigh a bit. Great, now stay here, inhale that left arm straight up so you're not mirroring me, and then bring it up and over for a pure side bend. Release, other leg in front now. Right hand grabs onto that knee. Good, twist your body a little bit and then lean forward. Getting a stretch more sort of down into the QL area, the back. So I hope you enjoyed the workout. If you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And as I said earlier, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. And if you're part of the Over 50 Fitness app and you're enjoying this workout ads free, bravo. Check out Tamara's kettlebell workouts too, they're awesome. All right, now face me, nice and tall on the spine, side bend. Now for those of you on YouTube, and if you've been to my workouts in the past, hey, we would love to see you join us on Patreon. It's due to their support that we can keep the workouts going. The information's down in the description. And then final, final thing I've got to say is in September, I am launching literally my biggest challenge to date. It's 25 and 25, 25 minutes of exercise for 25 days straight. Yes, baby. So you can get yourself signed up by checking out the link down in the description. If you're part of the Over 50 Fitness app or Patreon, don't worry about it. I got you covered. You're already going to be part of it. <laughs> That's how I roll. All right, everybody, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day and I look forward to working out with you in next session. Bye!